new reports coming out showing that uh, troll farms of various sorts are spooling up for the Democratic primary, already launching coordinated attacks against a variety of different candidates, uh, actually of both the progressive and more centrist variety. And uh, obviously with these sorts of things, it's difficult to know exactly who is coordinating or funding these things. There's no accusations at this point that I know of that this is an international thing. Mm -hmm. It's entirely possible this is domestic. Um, and we've seen that in, in prior elections too. But already in the primary, as early as it is, we've seen uh, Elizabeth Warren had a coordinated attack implying that she had a racist object in the background of a video. Yep. That was of course not true, but despite the fact that it was debunked, Tommy Lauren tweeted about it after it was debunked because it's convenient to believe that mm -hmm. she's a racist. Um, let's see, Beto O'Rourke uh, recorded a racist voice Mail in the 90s. I mean, he didn't, but lots of people believe that he did now. And uh, Kamala Harris lied about smoking pot while listening to certain types of music. The hosts of the show have since debunked that she was not actually answering the question. It was alleged that she was. Um, but who cares? It's already out there. Everybody believes it. So we're like in the first week of this thing, not and ready. already it's big. Not ready for 2020. No. <laughs> like emotionally, not there yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I will say, I think it's gonna be interesting to see how some of the candidates handle dealing with each other. Like not not the the racist stuff, the stuff that can be obviously fact checked, mm -hmm. but the the rumor mill, right? The if this is an easy attack on Kamala or this is an easy attack on Bernie, um, are are these troll farms then going to be trying to incite base voters against that? And I, listen, I, I have fallen into it too. It's like a whole big thing uh, online about um, you know who was doing what on the State of the Union response. Response and you, mm -hmm. you can get very emotional and wrapped up mm -hmm. in that type of conversation. I'm like, oh, did I just get baited into this? Uh, it's hard to know, yeah. and that's what makes it complicated. I mean, I think there, there can be a thing where some people, it, it's hard to know exactly how serious they're being, but people love to throw about around accusations of particular accounts being trolls, mm -hmm. or I mean, trolls, you can just call them a troll if you want to. But whether they're a bot or not is a different sort yeah, of I think, thing. I think an egg is an egg. If you can't put your face out there, you're an egg. Yeah, call you that. Um, but there are people who believe all sorts mm -hmm. of uh, rational and irrational things. So we can't assume that this is a computer yeah. program. But, that, but we do know, and this is we know some of this from the Russia investigation, that that is part of what was being exploited. That these mm -hmm. are already feelings and sentiments that people have. But when you increase the amount of it and aggregate it, it can then bubble and balloon and become far more extreme a reaction. Yeah. So that, that's also something just to be aware of as we're all trying to get fact check and information and be accurate and be rational about this election going forward. Yeah. We just need to be rational because any of these, any of these candidates are gonna be better than Trump. I agree. Uh, I mean, it is possible someone could declare that I would not support. I find that hard to believe. Yeah, it's, it's pretty- I drove past tons of people I would support in the next election past uh, just this morning. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I have, I have an open mind. I don't have an empty mind, but I have yes. an open mind. Yes, I'm with but you. I can't conceive of someone who I probably would not support. And it's, and it's less, please, please, I think we all have to not relitigate 2016 primary. That's not mm -hmm. what this is about. It's going to be a beautiful thing to have all of these candidates debating on stage and really honing what the values and principles should be of the Democratic Party. Let's embrace it. Mm -hmm. You know, The Republicans did that and they got the White House. So having mm -hmm. 12 or 15 candidates is not gonna be our problem. Yeah, and if you wanna talk about primaries, we're gonna have like 15 years of the 2020 primary. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have 12 debates over the course of a year. We're gonna have endless primaries and caucuses and all of that. There's gonna be a lot to delve into there. Um, what does your gut say? How big will sort of coordinated attacks, bot networks and things like that? Do you think that they have the possibility of being important in the primary or will they just be sort of a fly you know, buzzing around your head? Oh, I think it's, this is the modern version of the robocalls that we saw in South Carolina against John McCain for the fact that he had a, they said he had an out of wedlock black daughter when he'd actually adopted a dark skinned Bangladeshi girl. Yeah. And so I think this is the modern version of that. Instead of it being on the phone and coming to your phone line, it's going to be coming to your phone via Twitter and via um, other digital medium. So we just have to be prepared for the fact that the, the id is going to play large in this campaign on the Republican side and unfortunately on the Democratic side as well. Yeah. So let's not fall into our id. Yeah, no, uh, comparing it actually to the robocalls I think is, is very, mm -hmm. very smart. Uh, my advice, and it, uh, it doesn't just apply to this, it applies to almost everything. Uh, Twitter can be fun. Yeah. You know, uh, it can be Facebook good. Facebook can be fun. Facebook can be fun. They can be productive. What they are not is representative yes. of literally anything. Like, mm -hmm. like don't like. First of all, we create our own bubbles. But even if we weren't actively doing that, like 
the more extreme voices tend to get amplified in terms of likes and retweets. And by extreme, I don't just mean things that I disagree with, even things that I extremely agree with. Things that I say are more likely to be retweeted if they're more, you know, like yep. So just understand that the things you're seeing aren't necessarily representative of everything that's going on, both in terms of the fact that the person saying the message might not be a literal human being, but also that if you feel like, Man, lots of people agree with me. Why doesn't everyone that I see in my day to day life mm -hmm. agree with me? Understand that to some extent we're self selecting or thinking that everyone who disagrees with, with me is a crazy a hole. Yep. Well, they're not necessarily, just sometimes you the actually, online ones. You actually might like them in person. You actually exactly. might find some common ground in person that you're not finding because you're limited to a certain number of characters on Twitter. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this clip from the damage report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full damage report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.